Welcome, everybody. They are in the house. Very good. Today's class is free. Sometimes we have a ten dollar charge, but not today. Today is a free hidden clinic, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. What's happening, guys? Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Come on in for a hitting clinic with Coach Ball game. We are ready to rock and roll. Hey, Jimmy. Noki Max. Guzman. Hello, everybody. I'm Coach Ball game. Follow me at Coach Ball game. I'm always dropping knowledge as far as baseball goes. That's my alarm. That means it's time to go. Um, follow me at Coach Ball Game, and I'll be doing a baseball trivia contest tonight with some other Easton boys, Baseball Lifestyle 101. If you win the baseball trivia contest, uh, you get some swag from Baseball Lifestyle. So that is tonight uh, in a couple of hours. But first, we're going to do a little hitting clinic. Lando in the house, water slide. Hello, everybody. Uh, usually this time of the day, I do a, uh, a class called the Sandlot, the virtual Sandlot. I'm Coach Ballgame, uh, and I do, some, uh, I do some crazy stuff. And one of the crazy things I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to give you a free hitting clinic. So get your notebooks out uh, if you'd like. Uh, but I want to break this down into three main parts with our hitting clinic. So uh, there are three words, balance, speed, and vision. And let me throw that question at you first, the word balance. Uh, can anybody give me a, a definition in your own words? What does balance mean? If I'm a good hitter, if I'm Mike Trout, if I'm Bryce Harper, if I'm Cody Bellinger, if I'm going to hit a bomb, i got to have great balance. So what does that word mean to you? Let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Staying in control from Lando. Anybody else got some goods? What does balance mean? Steady, pretty boy Aiden and a boy mustache salute. Uh, by the way, I have a lot of salutes. One of them is the mustache salute. I've also got the beard. The bicep, the double bicep, the bounce back, the scholar of somebody's being super smart. When you rotate through the hips, very good. Awesome. Uh, guys, question. Why do these trees outside, why do they not fall over when the wind blows? Any ideas? Distribute the weight evenly, staying through the zone. Guys, why do these trees not fall over when the wind blows? Sometimes the wind is howling. Roots, balance. There's roots in the ground. We want to treat our feet like the roots of a tree. So for me, before I even think about the stance, or excuse me, before I even think about the swing, I got to think about my stance. And I've got to get my stance strong. I don't want anybody to be able to push me over. So for that to happen, feet wide, knees bent, and I get my bee honkus down low, all right? My bee honkus, like I'm sitting on a toilet, and now I'm going to shift my weight back and forth, and I'm going to dance on that toilet right there, just like that. Now, this strong base, you use it in any sport. If you're playing defense in basketball, you want to get here. If you're returning a serve in tennis or volleyball, you've got to get to this position. But you don't want anybody to be able to push you over. So I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're in your living room with a bat. Maybe you're in your backyard with a tee and a net. If so, I'd like you to take some swings and just try to take some swings without falling over. Take you about five swings, whether you're left-handed, right-handed, whatever. 
but maybe put some markers down just outside your shoulder length, shoulder width. That way you're nice and wide and rooted in the ground. If you're just joining, it's Coach Ball Game, East and Handle. Uh, we're doing a hit clinic today, so get your notebooks out. And on my YouTube channel as well, welcome in all my, all my loyal students. So, make sure you stay off your heels, okay? That good wide base, strong stance. I think of a guy like Chris Bryant. See how wide he gets? See how low he gets? He wants to be rooted in the ground. He wants to be balanced, okay? Uh, my, my guys here on Easton, throw some, some of your favorite hitters out. Who's some of your favorite hitters? boy Cornelio, Nathan. Kyle, who's some of your best hitters? What about you, Water Slide? Mom, Dad? Dinger, Yelich, Chipper Jones, Javi Baez, very nice, Mookie Betts, Miguel Cabrera, Griffey. Oh, I'm loving these names. This is great. All of them have different types of swings. Some of them take a big step. Some of them have their hands low. Some of them a little bit higher. But if you'll notice, if you watch them in slow motion, during their swing, while they're loading, while they're moving to the ball, at impact, after impact, as they're going to their finish, nobody can push them over. So one of the first things um, that I teach all my hitters to do is go home every day, take 10, 15 swings a day in slow motion, and every now and again freeze, and then have your little brother or your little sister try to push you over. Right? Then keep going, keep going, keep going. Freeze. Then have your mom or your dad or somebody try to push you over and you stay nice and strong, rooted in the ground. Right? I'm sure you've got that teammate or maybe you've done it yourself where they swing and then they're, they're just falling over. Right? They're trying to swing so hard that they fall off balance. Before we think about speed, before we think about crushing a baseball, Anthony Rizzo, He's got great, great balance, right? Love that name. Who is that? Jimmy? Yeah, you're a Cubs fan, I can tell. Uh, awesome. Magwell, same thing. So we're going we're gonna to create this pizza today. I treat my hitting like a pizza. And some of my kids that have been doing camps with me forever, they know about this pizza. But before uh, we put any toppings on our hitting pizza, we need the dough. So this is the dough of the pizza. Wide stance, bend the knees, and dance in that stance. Lastly, I call this our flashlight. Okay, this knob of the bat. We don't want this flashlight to get wrapped out, wrapped behind us and point towards the umpire. Trivia question, why? Who can tell me why? Why do we not want this thing to reach back here and point towards the umpire or the catcher. This flashlight right here. What's wrong with this? Lando says bat speed. This is also live on YouTube. Yes, yeah, on Coach Ball Games YouTube. You can hop on both. Takes more time. Parker, scholar salute. Takes more time. Jackson, that's right. You get stiff. Christian, nice job. Takes longer to get around. Too much time. Love it. That's Curtis, Roman, Christian. PV60, Kyle, it's all, you're right there. Do we want a big swing backwards or a quick swing forwards? A hundred times out of a hundred, we want a quick swing forwards. So I always think about it like we're shaving our mustache, just like this. It's not a big swing back here. And a lot of times, we think that's gonna make us hit it further if we take this big step, but we reach back, way back here. So that's a slow swing. You're going to hit it off the handle, and it's not going to go anywhere. Very good. Water slide also with a good answer. Straight to the ball, Curtis. That's right. Mustache salute for you. Um, great. So there's our stance, okay? Topping number one. I call it load and explode. Um, can anybody give me your own definition of load and explode? If you're just joining us, I'm Coach Ball Game. Follow me at Coach Ball Game. Jonathan in the house. 
What does load and explode mean, folks? Load what? Explode what? What does that mean? Stretch and fire, Mike Jr. Iron Mike Jr., that boy. Yeah, what else? Load the weight, sure. What's up, Lucas? What does that mean? Load and explode. Mike Trout hits bombs because he loads and explodes. Kyle says hips and shoulders. Very good. Set first, Forrest. Very good. Hands go back. Stride and explode the hips by Curtis. Stride and swing from, uh, oh, that's Dinger. Load, says Lando. Load the hand, says Jake. Jackson, set the swing. Very good. Now here's the key. We're all starting to face pitchers that throw faster, right? So we have got to get into that set position, like you're all saying, the hips, load the shoulders, Roman, very good, Jonathan, hands go back. That load position, it has to happen before the pitcher releases the ball. Because a lot of you guys are facing 78, 79, 80 miles an hour from like 54 feet. It's not even 60 feet, six inches. All right, and then you start facing 90, 91, 92. Me, personally, I was a, a big stepper and a reach backer. And I was a good athlete, so I got away with that against slow pitchers. But when I started facing Justin Verlander, and I faced him in college, when I started facing guys throwing 92, 93 with a nasty splitter and a nasty changeup, I didn't do very well with the reach back and the big step. So I had to simplify things. And topic number one on our pizza is load. Quiet, simple, nothing much, okay? I know some of you have seen Mike Trout. He picks that foot up and puts it down. When you're on TV, when you're Mike Trout, then you can pick it up and put it back down. But right now, most of us are early teens, 10, 11, 12 years old. Let's simplify things. Hitting is very, very difficult. And if we can simplify it, thumbs up. You can start taking the big step when you're on TV, okay? Load, just lift the front heel slightly off the ground, okay? I'm gonna shift this camera down just a touch so you can see the heel. You guys can see my heel. This thing's gotta come up just barely. And I got some pain back here. Now the pitcher releases the ball. I'm not going to take a big step. I'm going to stay real quiet with my front toe, and I'm going to squish two big, hairy, nasty beetles with my back toe. Now all of this pain has gone to the front leg. I saw somebody, it might have been Roman, say weight transfer. Absolutely right. You load back here. You explode right here. I saw a great picture of Mike Trout right when he hits a baseball. At that moment of impact, his front leg, his muscles were flexed. Nothing was left back here. He transferred everything to right here. Notice the head stayed very still. It didn't go with the weight. It stayed still, okay? So topping number one on our pizza, load and explode. I love some of these handles. Hank Aaron, what a great handle that is on Instagram. So our pizza has started out with a good foundation, good base, dancing dough, then a little load, and a quick explode, weight transfer, okay? Uh, I got to interview Whit Merrifield. Who's ever heard of Whit Merrifield? Yep, I got to interview Albert Pujols. They both signed my drum. I've got a drum with both their names on it. And I said, hey guys, uh, loud front foot or quiet? They said, very quiet. And I said, why? Any ideas? Throw some answers at me. Why did Whit Merrifield and Albert Pujols tell me to have a quiet front foot when I'm trying to hit? Head move, says Mr. Stronghold. Mustache salute. That is correct. If you've got a loud front foot, your head moves all over the place. Yes, we will get to the elbows uh, next. We will get to the bat path and the bat speed next. Less time, very good. He says, whenever he's got a loud front foot, his head jiggles. And when the head jiggles, it's really hard to hit a 95 mile an hour fastball. So, if he, with Merrifield, imagines he's landing on an egg and he doesn't wanna break that egg. 
and that keeps his head very, very quiet, okay? Again, we think the reach back here and the big step here is what gives us power. No, it's all about quiet and quick. It's not big and loud, it's quiet and quick. Cool, if you're just joining us, I'm Coach Ballgame, welcome in. We're doing a hidden clinic, get your notebooks out. And for any parents out there, moms, dads, who might be teaching baseball or coaching next season, this is great for you too, to be able to communicate with your kids how to hit the ball correctly. Okay, so our pizza, we've got our dancing dough. Nobody's gonna be able to push us over. We've got our load and explode. Weight transfer with a quiet front foot. Topping two is just hold your balance finish for two seconds. And notice the back kind of looks like a back scratcher. We dance, we load, we explode, and then we hold the finish. Now question, in a game, you're supposed to hit the ball and then run to first base. So why in practice am I asking you to hold your balance finish? Who can be the first one to answer? I'm gonna do a Q&A at the very end, Jonathan. Stay with me, okay? About 3.40. Why in the world would I ask you to hold your balance finish in practice? Matthew, Jonathan, anybody, any answers? So it's a better hit, that's right, Matthew. Yeah, it, it keeps you more balanced. Plus in practice, we wanna over-exaggerate good technique. You know how to run, right? You don't need to practice running in practice. You need to practice holding that balance finish. See if you're all the way around and balanced. That's right, Abby. It's a great way to check your finish. You can be your own teacher, right? Um, get more power. That's right. Very good, Jonathan. Um, but I love that answer by Abby. She said, then you can be your own, you can grade yourself. If you're just swinging and running, you can't grade yourself. Thumbs up, Abby, add a girl. Let's give Abby and add a girl. One, two, three, add a girl. Perfect. So let's say you're in the backyard right now and you're hitting balls off a tee into a net. Practice these two toppings, load and explode, and then hold the balance finish for two seconds. Then maybe somebody comes and tries to push you over. Maybe somebody's doing soft toss with you. Uh, you don't want them to push you over, okay? Stay rooted in the ground. Any questions so far? That's toppings one and two. Dancing stance, load quietly into the back leg, explode into the front leg. One more little nugget here before we get to topping three. If you're hitting off of a tee right now, don't just stare at the ball on the tee and then get the ball. Use your imagination. Imagine there's a pitcher out there in front of you. Instead of the net, it's a pitcher. Imagine that pitcher lifts their leg and then they separate their hands and they're about to pitch. When they do that, you practice the timing of your load. Load into your back leg. Front heel comes up, power in the back leg. Now you imagine the pitcher releases the ball, you see it, and explode. By the time of impact, two beetles are dead, all the power's in the front leg now, and then you stay through the ball and stay balanced. Good power, okay? Use your imagination. Um, topping number three, we ready? Big swing back or quick swing forwards? We already answered it earlier, we want a quick swing forwards. This one was the toughest for me. Uh, I really enjoyed getting back here and then taking this big swing back, but I really struggled against the fast pitchers. I always got jammed and hurt my hands uh, or I'd have weak contact. It wasn't until I learned how to shave my mustache that I was able to get a quicker barrel, okay? So here's the idea. Flashlight. We don't want it to wrap behind us and point at the umpire. We want it to try and stay here even when we load. Now, when the ball is coming and it's coming fast, our first move with our hands has to be flashlight, boom, straight on the ball, okay? The hands stay tight. The hands stay close to the body. And you see this flashlight now it's shining on the pitch that's about to come. 
right? And I'm here first. Most young hitters, they either go back here first or they go out here first. I call that fishing, going fishing, right, with a fishing rod. Either way, you're going to be late. We've got to stay tight, stay close to the body. Uh, if you ever slow down a pro and watch them in slow motion, they're all super, super close to their body to the ball. The saying is short to the ball, long through the ball. So topping three, shine a flashlight on the ball that's coming on the pitch and shave your mustache or shave your cheek. Topping four, after you hit the ball, stay through it towards center field like another ball's coming right after it. Say that with me, short to, long through. All right, trivia time. Why does every professional hitting coach say that? Why does every professional hitting coach teach short to, long through? How does that help us be a better hitter? Short to the ball, long through the ball. Every hitting coach I've ever had said that. Every hitting coach uh, that my friend has ever had in pro ball has said that. Minor league, major league. It's a better swing. Every major league hitter, it's more solid, says Matthew. Mustache salute, that a boy. Better contact and power, says Matty Pep. Very good. Hang in there, Jonathan. Q&A time happens at 340. Every MLB hitter wants their barrel to stay in the hitting zone for as long as possible. For that to happen, they've got to quickly get their barrel to the zone and then keep it in that hitting zone for a super long time. So for me, I always imagined there was an extra ball that I'm trying to hit. Let's use this as an example. After I quickly get there and try and hit it towards center, Imagine there's another ball right after it, and I'm going to go hit that one too. Stay through it. It gives you harder contact, especially when you're fooled. Let's say it's a changeup or a curveball. Your bat will stay through the hitting zone longer and uh, give you a better chance at hard contact. All right? Uh, quick question. What if the foot dances? What if your feet are dancing? Well, we talked about that earlier. Take, uh, take care of that at the beginning. Go ahead and root your toes into the ground before the pitch is even thrown. And secondly, practice, right? Go home, practice, 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 practice. Take practice swings without falling over. Then speed it up a little bit, faster, until you're at full speed and nobody can push you over at any point during the swing, okay? Now, here's a great drill for short to the ball, because boy, did I have to work hard at this. I really like to be long to the ball, and I had to teach myself the right way. I think we all do. I don't think anybody's born swinging short to the ball. People are born swinging big back, and you have to train yourself the right way. So, imagine you're doing soft toss, or maybe you're just on a tee. You've got your dancing dough, you load. Before you explode, take your hands to your cheek, and shine your flashlight either on the ball on the tee or on the person that's flipping you soft toss. Then the ball comes, swing from your cheek through two balls, right? You're dancing, you load, you shine your flashlight on the ball on the tee, and then swing from that place. It's an over-exaggeration drill. You're not going to do that in the game, but it is a drill that teaches you good bat path. First time I ever faced um, a pitcher that I felt like I was uh, outmatched or outmanned was a guy named Justin Verlander in college. He was throwing like 93, 94, and, and he had a really awesome curveball. And the reason I felt outmatched is I had not trained my swing to be straight enough, quick enough. I had to guess. If your swing isn't quick and straight to the ball, then you kind of have to guess what he's throwing. But if you've got a dependable, quick path to the baseball, you don't have to guess. You can just sit here, see it. Oh, that's a fastball. Bang, I'm short to it. 
Or wait, that's a curveball. Wait on it, wait on it, bang, short to it. But you don't have to be afraid of being late as long as you have a quick swing. And the only way you create that quick swing is tons and tons of practice. So short to it, long through it. Now, I think some of you are writing this stuff down, maybe in a baseball notebook, which is awesome. I think you should. Uh, honestly, these are things I've either picked up playing through college baseball and a lot of it interviewing professional baseball players. So uh, it's information you're going to want to hold on to. And if you're a parent, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you to write this vernacular down because I've noticed in my 20 years of coaching, this is what kids respond to. They, res <coughs> they respond to these kind of words. Um, lastly, okay, and then we'll get to some Q&A because I know we have tons of questions. The last topping for a pizza is your vision, and it's the most important, okay? I see a lot of great swings. I see a lot of beautiful swings, okay, especially if you've really been working on your toppings on your pizza, but then you still miss the ball if you don't see it. The most important topping is paying attention to the ball out of the pitcher's hand. Seeing the speed of it, seeing the location, how is it trending? Is it trending straight? Is the spin causing it to trend this way, trending up, slow, making it trend down? That's why we get set and prepared before the pitcher releases it. So we have half of a second to just become best friends with the ball. That's the most important half second of your life. Is right out of the pitcher's hand to when the pitch is halfway to you, all right? That 30 feet, your brain has to be turned on and your eyes have to be very, very focused on the ball. And the way I phrase it is become best friends with the baseball. The spin, the speed, the location, all of it. What color is its hair? What's its favorite cereal? Ask all those questions, answer all those questions as the pitch is coming. Then when you've got a good sense of what the pitch is, and you're ready to attack, you must see ball touch back. We get excited, especially in the game, we want to see where we hit it, and no. You've got to stay down, stay through it, watch the ball hit the bat, hit that second imaginary ball, and if you're on a tee right now, working off the tee, keep your eyes on the tee where the ball and the bat touch. That is where the music happens. That's where the beauty is. It's right here where impact happens. Again, slow down a major leaguer. Slow down Bryce Harper right at impact, and his eyes stay down after impact almost all the way to his finish. He's not looking up until that bat is scratching his back. All right? So there's topping five, the most important. So just a quick recap, and then we're going to get to some other uh, specifics, things that are going to really help you. But our dancing go, feet wide, knees bent, dance on a toilet, right? Keep the flashlight forward. We don't want to wrap behind us. Topping one, before the pitcher releases the ball, load just a small amount of pain in your back leg. Get yourself set and ready to fire. The pitch is thrown. We pay attention. We become best friends with it. And then we explode. Boom and hold that balance finish, right? Topping one, load and explode. Topping two, hold the balance finish. Topping three, short and quick to the ball. Topping four, long through the ball. The first hitting lesson I ever took, uh, it was a professional hitter, and he gave me a 30 minute hitting lesson. He said two words the entire Half hour. Center field. Then I take another swing. Center field. Then I hit another one. Center field. Every single time. He was trying to train me to hit through the ball towards center. And then topic five, vision. It's all about vision. Um, so now I'm just going to give you a couple little, little tips, some really helpful things that helped me along the way. And then I'm going to let you uh, ask me any questions you might have. How to hit the inside versus the outside. 
So I practiced on a tee. And if you're trying to work on hitting the inside pitch, you're going to set the tee up really close to your body and out in front of you. And you're just going to practice whew, meeting it out in front, short to it, stay long through it, but hit 25 balls with a pitch that's almost going to hit you right here in the leg, but you're out in front. And muscle memory will take over after about 10 or 15 swings. How do I hit the outside pitch? Well, that's the outside pitch, but I can't meet it out in front. I've got to let it get back here. So I'll shift to this side so you can see. This pitch is two inches off the outside corner. I'm going to practice off of a tee, almost off my back leg. And I'm just going to practice going through towards right field, and I'm not trying to do too much whatsoever. Half speed swing off the barrel goes a lot further than a full speed swing off the very end. And that's something I learned along the way. That outside pitch, which most of the pitchers that are facing you are throwing, they're throwing that outside pitch. Why? Because nobody can hit it hard. Once I took my, my pedal or my foot off the gas pedal when it was an outside pitch and just smoothed it half speed, I started hitting balls hard down the right field line. But you kind of got to take what the pitcher gives you on that outside pitch. And I think maybe 70, 75% of the pitches you young teenagers are seeing are outside. So practice, practice off the tee. Maybe get it three, four inches off home plate, off your back leg, and just practice staying close right here. And then trying to smooth it towards right field off the barrel. Okay? Very good. So that's, that's how you can work inside, outside, off of the tee. Before I get to any questions, let me just make sure I'm good on my end. Yeah, I'm good. Ask me questions. Any questions you might have, and I know somebody already talked about kind of popping it up and dipping, so I'm going to get to that point. And then if, if your question passes by, ask it again. I want to get to everything um, before we have to leave. But for me, I love playing golf too. And sometimes that would creep into my baseball swing. And so I had to make sure I put my golf hat on when I was golfing and my baseball hat on when I was playing baseball. But I always used a high tee. And whenever I took practice swings in baseball, I always swung at pitches right here about my chest or my chin because I was training myself to stay on top, especially against those fast pitchers. The pitch seems like it's rising. So you want to make sure you're staying high. Now, two things happen to make you go underneath it. One, your back shoulder drops, right? So we've got to try to balance a Coke bottle on our back shoulder to keep that thing high and level. The second thing that happens is you get to a good position with a flat shoulder, but your barrel sags. What causes that? Your top hand. Your top hand gives way and the barrel sags. So the bottom hand is doing the work here, towards the ball, shaving your cheek, shaving your mustache. The top hand has to really take over at impact so the barrel doesn't sag. This wrist right here, this top wrist, it's got to firm up and be strong enough to keep the barrel flat so it doesn't sag. You see it all the time. It looks like a perfect swing, but at the very last second, the top hand kind of gives way, and then it's a foul ball straight back. So. Something I do a lot of, and I did a lot of, was high T top hand drill. That really helped me stay on top of the baseball. Say that with me, high T top hand drill. Boom! And then you're not sagging, all right? Uh, All right, kids, uh, kids that want to relocate their front foot uh, leg while swinging. So kids that want to take a big step, is that what you're asking? So they're in this stance right here with their feet 
and then they want to pick this foot up and go. Um, again, I just, the, the way I, I talk to the kids that really have that habit of wanting to step, I give them the, the option, right? I want to empower the kid and let them be the judge and, and uh, call the shots here. I don't want to uh, impose too much of my will on them. But I do ask, hey, are you willing to try something new? Are you willing to try a little more quiet front foot and just see if it works? And then go with both ways. There are the occasional kids that can relocate that front foot, take a big step, and still be fine and be on time. But for the most part, major league hitters, they pick their front foot up and then they put it right back down where they started and their head doesn't move an inch. Somebody under the age of 14 that tries to do that, they land in a different spot and their head moves. That Their motor skills just aren't ready for that sort of thing. So um, I think the biggest, the, the, the main word for me there is simple. Keep things simple. Hitting is so hard uh, and we have to be super quick and tight and short to the ball that if we can stay simple with our lower body, gives us a better chance to do that. Um, toe tap or leg kick gives better balance and quicker bat swing. Good one. So here's something that I'm sure a lot of you kids have, have been coached this. Um, I'm a big fan of heel up and then heel down simply because it, it kept some rhythm in my swing. If, if I had to pick it up and kind of do this, then I got stay, I got stiff. I didn't, want, I didn't want to ever feel stiff in the swing. I always wanted to have some movement. And then the pitcher is ready to fire, and I just lean back, and then I go to work, and I, I never had to stop. When I have to uh, pick my toe up and stop, it, it just looks kind of stiff for me. So I don't teach that, but I do know that some kids do better that way, right? Maybe some kids can't just heel up and heel down. They'll, they'll end up stepping, so they have to really anchor that front toe into the ground. So for me, more rhythm with heel up heel down. As you get older and you can go heel up, pick it up and put it right back down, that's ideal. But it's almost impossible until you're 15, 16 years old. And I never practice the leg kick in practice. And you see a ton of uh, major leaguers, they do the same thing. Their practice swing, it's very basic. It's wide, it's simple, it's short and quick to the ball. Now, sometimes in the game, we get a little bit uh, flashy with the front foot. I think of it like this. Practice is where all the hard work comes, all the over-exaggerating, all the thinking, all the toppings on the pizza. And then you get into the game, you've done all that hard work, you've practiced nonstop. Now you just entertain the crowd and you play. You react to what you see, you dive, you spit, you laugh and you entertain the crowd. Uh, that's how I look at practice versus the game. What other questions? Um, drills to help me not collapse. Great one. So what is collapsing? Collapsing is everything's looking good, and then your backside kind of collapse like this, right? And you notice that your front, when you collapse, and you basically you load over your back leg, and then you stay over your back leg, and collapse like that, you're not rotating and getting the power into your front leg. So the drill I do, um, load, explode, lift. I do the lift drill because if you're making yourself lift your back foot, all your power has to go to your front leg, okay? So say you're working off of a T, load it, explode it, lift it. And hopefully, if you explode and then you lift and your head doesn't move, thumbs up, you're good. But say you're collapsing, you load, and then you stay over your backside and you don't explode and you collapse. When you do the lift, look how much your head moves, right? The lift room, good one for the collapse. Something else that can happen is that front knee will collapse. And the problem with your front knee collapsing is look what your head does. It goes from up here to down here. So we want to have a firm front leg 
at impact. That way our head stays in a box and the head doesn't move. Mm -hmm. Which MLB player swing do you think is the best? Um, I love Anthony Rizzo because he's kind of got two different approaches. He'll let it loose. He's still simple. He's not, he's not doing crazy stuff. He's very simple, short, quick to the ball. But when he gets two strikes on, he widens out. He chokes up. And he becomes the ultimate team player. He just tries to put it in play. Right? Sometimes he still hits home runs like that because he's super powerful. And power doesn't come from a big swing. It comes from a quick barrel. So you got to remember that. So I love watching Anthony Rizzo hit. Javi Baez, as fun and flashy as he is, I wouldn't teach a kid uh, how to swing like him. He's one of those rare, rare guys that, uh, you know, you just leave him alone. He's going to do awesome, but you can't teach what he does. He's a magician. So I take my hand off the bat a little too early. We see this one a lot where, I mean, you see it in pro ball where Cody Bellinger and everybody, they take their hand off. I also did that as well. I like to take my top hand off, but not in Little League. In Little League, what happens is every Little Leaguer, they take their hand off the bat too early when they're doing the one hand thing. So I always make my Little Leaguers up until 12 years old keep both hands on the bat, okay? Once you get 13 years old and you've figured out how to get through the baseball with both hands, the, the top hand shouldn't come off the bat until way after you've hit the baseball. But for a lot of youngsters, they take it off way too early. So you need both those hands. Like I said, especially that top one at impact to keep your barrel flat. Very good. Water slide, wanna be rooted and balanced but uh, not push you, uh, but should not be able to easily push over the batter. Very good. Uh, hey, in reality, sometimes you're going to, I mean, it's going to be hard not to stay strong enough where somebody can't push you over, but it's just a good practice drill to try to hold that finish without somebody pushing you over, which brings me to another great point. When you're practicing these toppings on this pizza and you mess up, Let's say you hit the ball and you fall over. If you give up and just fall, you didn't get better. But if you're falling over and you try to save it, and you try to hold your finish, that's when you get better. That's when you learn the most. So um, perfect practice makes perfect. No doubt about it. Uh, any, other, any other questions here as far as hitting goes? This has been fun. I'm Coach Ballgame, by the way. I, I work with Easton, and I run camps for kids. And uh, if you want to try to win a trivia contest uh, at 5 Pacific time today, hop on my Instagram handle. But uh, follow me. I'm always dropping knowledge there. We've got the uh, – uh, I like to be open stance here and then close myself in again. Make sure you're ready for that, okay? Like a Mike Trout, he starts a little open and then he can pick it up and close it. It's not something I teach somebody under the age of 13. No doubt about it. Keep it simple at a young age. Crawl before you can walk, okay? Just too many bad things can happen if you get too flavorful or eccentric. At Coach Ballgame is my uh, Instagram. And I'm doing some baseball trivia with Baseball Lifestyle 101 tonight. They're awesome. They got some great swag. Um, but how about we give Easton a round of applause? Easton's epic. Easton's epic. We got the Easton bats rolling here. This is great. Oh, man. Miss you, too. Love it. We've got kids from all over. What other questions? We've got a couple more minutes. And then you, uh, you on the Easton handle, you've got a treat coming up at 4 o'clock. Another North Carolinian, by the way. Any other questions here? Folks, this has been fun. I appreciate you having me on. 
Uh, this was your hitting clinic, free today. So if you joined us on YouTube, this is a freebie, okay? They're usually $10, and I do these every day. So join me on my YouTube every afternoon, 3 Pacific, and we'll talk baseball. Tomorrow we're going to talk pitching. We're going to talk uh, throwing and pitching drills. Any tips on turning the hips? That's a good one. Right here, boom. For me, I just, by the time I made impact, I wanted my belt buckle looking at the pitcher. Okay, so when I was hitting off of a tee, I, I would, I think it's important to have like a singular focus each round of 10. So say you're going to take a round of 10 swings off the tee, have a singular focus. Okay, for these 10, I'm just going to make sure my belt buckle looks at the pitcher by impact, right? And then the lift drill is also really good because if you're not able to lift that back foot, then you haven't twisted those hips like that. But it's also uh, helpful to watch old Elvis Presley dances. He could really hit home runs because his hips were firing big time. How do you break in a glove? Throw a ball in there repeatedly. Bang, bang. And then use Neat's foot oil. Oh, man. Christian Yelich's swing. It's just the most beautiful thing ever. My YouTube is uh, youtube.com slash coach ball game. And um, my, my afternoon class, which is usually this time, it's just a deep dive for any baseball nerds that want to nerd out on baseball. And I bring in a lot of friends that talk uh, fielding ground balls, turning double plays, outfield defense, hitting, pitching, catching. We do it all. Best way to get your timing down, practice, all right? Take as many live swings as you can. I think what helped me the most is when I started taking live BP off, off uh, other pitchers in practice. Um, you you got to make sure all your toppings are on your pizza, right? But I think the biggest thing that gets us off time is when our front foot gets too loud. If that front foot gets too loud, we get streaky. We'll have some good games and then we'll have some dry spells. So keep the front side quiet and then, yeah, take as much live BP as you can. I love it. At age 11, be pitching, oh, it's gonna vary. And the one thing I'll say about that is do not push how fast you're trying to throw at age 11, all right? Big picture. In the big picture, it doesn't matter how fast you're throwing at age 11. There's no professional scouts in the stands. There's no college scouts. Your high school coach isn't even watching you yet. Um, Garrett Cole, he followed a program throughout the year. And if his program didn't align with a certain tournament, he wouldn't play in that tournament. Because he was always thinking, I want to be at my best and at my healthiest and throwing the fastest when I'm 18 years old. Same with curveballs. I had the best curveball when I was 10, but then I had the worst fastball when I was 15 because I threw too many curveballs at a young age. So um, I can't repeat that enough. Big picture. Okay, long toss. Keep trying to get stronger and stronger. Play the multiple sports. That way you can keep building. Um, and then when you turn 17, then we can take some stock and say, okay, how fast am I throwing? Um, the scouts are starting to come. Better arm accuracy, tune into my class. Tomorrow, we're gonna to talk pitching on my YouTube channel, Coach Ball Game, uh, every day at three o'clock Pacific. So Jack, tune in. But in a general sense, just get really good at playing catch. Uh, the pitchers that I let pitch on my team are the guys that play the best game of catch. Battling fear at home plate, really good one. I've got a blog. If you go to coachballgame.com, there's a blog. Go click the blog, and I've got a hit-by-pitch blog. I own one record at my college. Guess what it is? Career hit-by-pitch. I know exactly what it feels like to get hit. Um, but everybody goes through this. Everybody gets hit by somebody who throws pretty hard, and then they're afraid to get in the box. And um, you just have to know you're not alone. 
All the kids on your team are thinking the same thing. All the kids on the other team are thinking the same thing. And if you just keep being brave and getting in the box, time passes and you get through it. But uh, everybody, everybody goes through that fear. Last question. Played at Brown University. Played at Brown University. How to mentally be ready at the plate. The on-deck circle, JKN. The on-deck circle is the best place because once you get into the batter's box, like I said, it's game time. You just want to entertain the crowd and imagine you're, you're in the backyard having a birthday party. But the on-deck circle is a great way to get yourself ready. That's when you can time out your load. That's when you can really follow the path of the ball. And that what I said about paying attention to the pitch and becoming best friends, you can do that from the on-deck circle. You can start to see, okay, he releases it like this. That's a two-seamer. He releases it like that. That's a change-up. So on-deck circle, man. No doubt about it. Uh, this was super, super fun, gang. I will see uh, I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully. It's back on the regular Sandlot tomorrow. $10 a class. We dig deep. Um, and don't forget about my morning PE class every morning at 9. Thank you, Easton. And hang around uh, uh, on the Easton baseball handle. You got a treat coming up at 4 o'clock, a fellow Carolinian. All right, gang. Ooh, Michael, whenever I go up to bed, I always think of the best and imaginary myself doing it like me hitting a home run. There you go. Imagination, Michael. That's great. Dinger out of the boy. Pitcher and a catcher. What should you do? Hey, play it all. At Coach Ballgame is my Instagram, guys. At Coach Ballgame. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, play all the positions. And then when you get in high school, you got a better chance of starting. For me, I had never played right field until college. But when I noticed there was an open spot in right, I'm a right fielder. So learn all the positions. Good stuff, gang. Thanks for joining. All right. We'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. That one's free. If you mistakenly Venmoed me for today, then don't pay tomorrow. All right? Awesome. Bye-bye.